Well, I, I obviously it, uh, it's a time for giving, and I, I love Christmas, and um, you know it's just a I I, I kind of old school watch AMC and, and the movies and Hallmark and wrap presents, and I love play Santa. I give them to our our grandkids. I don't expect much, but definitely got a nice Christmas gift tonight. Uh, you know, with a, with a tough, hard fought win that I'm not sure we deserve to win. But we made some plays when it counted, got some stops when it counted. Uh, Selton goes three for 14, but hits obviously a big one that, that makes a difference, uh, a game winner for us. And Mike McGurl makes the right pass. Again, he's it's been really good assist turnover, six to two again. Um, days one, you know, we kept talking at the huddles. Um, you know, we had to make some plays and make some things happen. And, you know, Days one got a uh, – big rebound basket that kind of helped us um you know Nigel hit a couple back to back he then we ran a play for him for the third one and he didn't make it but he hit some big ones and um you know we just we just Davion makes a free throw a lot of guys contributed Carlton you know gets seven points it's plus 10 when he's in um Rudy was uh, had some open ones but just didn't get them in and um but we you know we found a way to win and that's that's the most important thing uh, for our guys to move forward, we are one and four now. We're five and five, so you've won four out of five. But obviously, you got to be better uh, as we get into the league if we're going to have any chance to beat people. So uh, I thought early we played in a hectic pace, uh, and I I wanted to be in a calm pace. I I, it, I wanted to make them move when we move when we again uh, 16 assists on 24 field goals when we made. Uh, the right plays, the easy plays, move their defense. We were pretty good. But I thought we settled for a lot of threes. We had eight offensive rebounds at halftime and no points out of it. And we did just not very smart things. You got a rebound. Davion just lumbers in there. Dejuan does a behind-the-back pass. We lose it. Somebody else did some, you know, just – I kept yelling, value the ball. And, and you know, it's it's all part of the growing and learning um, – you know, uh, it, it was, uh, you know, we found a way to win. Uh, you can be, at least be happy and move forward, but uh, you also, you got to get better. Uh, I, you know, credit to them. They've, they've had, what, every game on the road, I believe. Uh, we told our guys, don't take anything for granted. They're going to come and play. They played their best game uh, up until tonight against Wyoming the other night. And uh, I was worried about the inside presence. We did actually did a pretty good job on those guys. But we did not do a good job on their senior point guard. Ao was uh, really tough. Uh, you know, ironically, Nigel, who sprained his ankle in practice on Sunday, didn't practice Monday. Uh, you could see he was hobbling around. Uh, you know, Nigel at one of those late timeouts said, "Let me go back in," and and he said, "I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get ten." And we we did a good job of shutting him out down the stretch. Um, and that, you know, all those all those little things make a big difference in the game. Okay, first question up to Kellis Robinette. Um, yeah, Bruce, was that last play designed to go to Selton? Actually, um, it was supposed to hopefully get Mike and Dave and Davion in a ball screen with Nigel replacing, but um, they fought it. Uh, tried to overplay it. Mike took the lead, drove in, made the right pass. They help off the corners. Uh, I think, you know, obviously Selton had his, his tough time in different parts of the game, but, uh, you know, he made two threes down the stretch that were obviously big ones for us and uh, found found a way to win. I'm curious what you said to your team there uh, when you called that second timeout in the first half. And Omaha took the big lead. What did you do to, to well, get them? Well, I, I think uh, – you know, and Wyatt and, and Matt just brought it up. Uh, you know, that's a crucial point in the game. We're down 11, and, and we go on a 14-1 to 1 run and take the lead at halftime, which was instrumental. But then uh, this, the second half, um, you know, we score, I think, the first four possessions. But then we give them two threes, and, and, it, and it's still a, a one-possession game. So um, instead of us stretching it out, we, we – you know, we break down on defense, give them a couple open threes, allows them to keep momentum. Um, I think we got we got a little bit tight at a couple points, but, you know, we kept being positive in the huddles. 
and say, make plays. Don't be afraid to lose, play to win. And we, we got some stops and, and made some plays when it counted. Thanks, Bruce. Congrats on the win. Yep. Uh, next question uh, to John Kurtz. Yeah, Bruce, did you feel like the, the defense took some steps forward, particularly late in the game, getting some stops for you? Yeah, we, I thought we had good possessions. Um, you know, obviously the stops down the stretch because they did, they, it gave us a chance to win the game. But uh, we had good possessions, and but we would just – then we'd have a really bad one where we just let them reject us and go and get a layup or, you know, just uh, lose somebody on a on – a, uh, on a, on a, on a help situation. So, you know, we did, we did some good things. You hold them, you know, they shot threes pretty well. They haven't shot the three ball that well all year. Um, some of it, cause we didn't get, do a good job getting out of scrambles. Uh, but you know, we, we hold them to 40, we turn them over 15 times. Probably the only thing is the, the threes, uh, eight for 19, uh, kept them, kept them in the ball game. Speaking of threes, you feel like you guys fell in love with the three too yeah, much? Yeah, I don't. I, I wanted to, uh, you know, my whole talk, or obviously it didn't sink in, was to move them. If you move them, you could get easy plays. And, you know, if you have open three, you got to make them. I, I, you know, Rudy, uh, you know, I, he can make shots. Nigel obviously can make shots. I, I think Mike settled several times uh, for the – instead of trying to get to the hoop, at least the last one he didn't settle – and made the right play, and Selton stepped up and made a basket. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, Ryan Black. Hey, hey, Bruce, you touched a little bit on, on, on Nigel, especially him going back at that last time in the, one of the timeouts and him playing defense. But he also made a couple of key jumpers. He's made some real key plays on the stretch. What can you say about how, how well he played tonight? Well, you know, it's a gutsy performance because, you know, he, he did not – we didn't know if he'd go. I'll be honest, uh, yesterday morning I did, I did not think he was going to have a, a chance to get in there. And, we you know, we talked about maybe trying to get Monty ready a little quicker than we had planned. But uh, – you know, he's a gutsy young man. He loves to play. He loves, he, you know, he wants to win. He's a winner. And, uh, you know, made made some big plays on the defensive end, made a couple big shots for us. Uh, you know, it. so you, you, you got you to gotta be happy for, you know, that he gutted it out and helped us find a way to win. Um, any of those wins, I, I told them the scores won't matter. It, it goes as a win. You we go back to 13, I think it was South Dakota or somebody. We won by two and had the foul at the end. Uh, so those are the, you know, some of those games are, are not pretty, but they're winners. And, and uh, it hopefully helps us take a step forward and not, not go backwards. And, and Bruce, maybe not that, that Nigel hadn't already earned the respect of, of the team from just his play, but, but do you think from his teammates specifically playing through this injury today, maybe took that to another level? Yeah, I, I hope so. I, I hope they appreciate it because, uh, uh, you know, it was gutsy. There's no doubt it, it was a gutsy performance and uh, happy for him. And, and, you know, you think about our, our freshman, Davion, 10 rebounds, seven, seven points. Uh, you know, just pretty good effort for him in 22 minutes. And, uh, and then obviously Dej won uh, another, you know, another 10 rebound game, uh, giving us all five assists. Uh, still some turnovers, three steals, plus 11 of, uh, in the best in the team. And he led us on to play hard again with 14. So uh, he's he's definitely doing what he can do. And uh, that that effort and energy that he brings uh, is, is really, really important for us. Thanks so much, Bruce. Appreciate it. Yep. Uh, next question to Michael Golan. Yeah, Bruce, how would you grade your offensive efficiency with shooting 50% of your shots on the three-point line? I, I, you know, I said it before. We took too many. We settled for too many. Um, I thought especially first half early, um, you know, we, we, we weren't very patient. We shot 18 in the first half. Uh, some of it you got to take what they give you uh, because they help in and they were going to – they were helping off corners and we got some of those and – uh, but I just think we settled early and, and then you miss some of those. Now you don't have the rhythm instead of being a little more patient. And, uh, you know, again, we're, 
16 assists. At least we were positive, only 12 turnovers, but um, I bet three or four of those turnovers were off offensive rebounds. 16 on 24, it's a pretty good percentage. Uh, I said at halftime, I don't know what it was. It was nine on 13 or something. And I, I, and I said, guys, what does that show you? When we move the ball, when we play together, we make the right plays. Uh, we're a pretty good team, but when we try to do things on our own, we're, we're just not at that point yet. And you get 22 points in the paint. Are you looking for more more cuts, more harder cuts to the basket, more drives? Yeah, you know, uh, obviously Nigel's one of the guys that moves without the ball pretty well, and he he's, he's hobbling around. Um, you know, we got to get some other guys, you know, moving without the basketball to, you know, to get – get some drives into the paint and get people chasing us. Uh, uh, you know, that obviously that, that, uh, that would definitely help. Thank you. Uh, next question to Arnie Green. Arnie, you're muted. Sorry. Uh, yeah, could you talk a little bit about TCU and just uh, getting back into league play now after after this little break? Uh, Jamie's done a nice job. Uh, obviously, if they play small ball like they did last year with one big guy that's uh, become a really, really good player since freshman year. He's, he's made big strides, gives them an inside presence. Uh, they really spread you. They 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 shoot that three ball. They get they got some guys that can create. And M Hart has made big strides. Done what he Fuller done what he uh, what you want guys to do. You know, as freshmen, they kind of played backseat to Bain and 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 so last year made taking a step. Now another step this year. So uh, you know they they've been in two really close games in the league. Uh, you know, we're going to, we're obviously going to have to play better, uh, and do a better job defensively, uh, be a little more efficient, uh, and obviously it helps to make shots and, you know, we, but we got, if, I think if we're a little more patient and let those shots come, it, it'll definitely help. And also, uh, just maybe talk a little bit about Selton in that clutch situation, being willing to take that shot. Uh, you feel like, like that's a, his nature to, well, yeah, I don't think there's any doubt. He and I said it before. He 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 doesn't fundamentally. He doesn't have all the things we'd like. Um, he's still learning the game, uh, but he he. I think I said it one of the early teleconference or zooms we had. I said he just makes plays. He does he doesn't always do exactly what we ask, but he makes plays. And um, you know he you know I you know he makes the big three. He had the free throw too, but. Uh, you know, but at the at the same time, uh, I think he he is very very willing to take a big shot, and obviously tonight that, that was a huge one for a freshman to step up, and 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 help us find a way to win. Uh, next question to Rob Collins. Coach Weber, sorry if you've already addressed this. I just got off the air, but uh, during that last uh, minute defensive stand and then, of course, Selton taking the big shot, it looks like some of your freshmen grew up a little bit tonight. Yeah, there's no doubt. We, we did talk about it. The, you know, Nigel made big shots, stepped up on defensive end down the stretch, even with hobbling a little bit, wanted to take their guy and, and did a good job of staying in front. Uh, you know, uh, Davion, 10 rebounds, makes a big free throw when we need it. And then obviously Selton making the big shot, uh, so you know it's it's all part of the growing experience for them. And um, you know obviously it's it's a lot happier locker room than it could have been. That that last shot goes in. Uh, you know we're pretty sad, but we went we we've climbed out of a hole. We were one and four. Now we're five and five. Now where can we go from here? And and Saturday every game we've told them every possession, every game is important. If we're going to, and that's what, you know, they're going to have to have that maturity to, to get ready every time. And that's, that's the tough part of the long grind. Ironically, I, I text Dean Wade after the first NBA game and, uh, you know, I congratulated him. Obviously he, he's, he's played some minutes and, uh, you know, done some good things, but 
he said uh, one game and 70, whatever it is, 71 left. And, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, for our guys, it's a long grind. Uh, think about the NBA season. They all want to be there, but now you got, you know, they got all those games. So uh, it takes maturity, takes focus. We got to help them. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll get better as it goes. Uh, next question uh, to Breland Moore. Um, you kind of just touched on it a little bit, but how crucial is this? You know, you just talked about going from one and four to a 500 record. How crucial is that for the confidence of your young squad moving into Big 12 play? Well, there's no doubt. It, it, it you know, I, and I, I still, and I, I know people, you know, playing four days and losing was a big step for our guys because it, 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 it got their attention. It humbled them. Uh, we, as a staff, we had to figure some things out to help them. And, and you know, to our guys' credit, we've, we've taken some nice steps. Are, are, we, are we great yet? No. But we've made some strides, and, we, and we're starting to understand who we are. Um, you know, we got to keep fighting, grinding, uh, hopefully a little confidence, but also learn from it, you know, why do we put ourselves in this bind? You know, we, we can't do this. And, and we got we to gotta be a little more efficient on offense and, and uh, not give easy ones on the defensive end. So, um, you know, that, that, that's, a, you know, moving forward, just that learning, growing, uh, learning from wins, learning from losses. Uh, obviously, it's a lot more fun to learn from a win, but you can learn from both of them, and we've taken strides with that.